So guys, this video is not encouraging or condoning any of the dodgy behavior reported in this, in this video. And also a full article of this can be found on my website. So guys, I'm making this video to accompany the sharpening section on my website. And you're gonna find, if you've not been in a betting shop before, three of these um, examples, a little bit shocking maybe. Um, I've been in the betting industry for many years now and I used to work in the industry in the late 1990s and we used to get this guy the pencil man reports about him and he even phoned up our office once saying to us well threatening us not to tell the bookies that he's been reported in their area now I've done a quick google search on him and I was shocked to see that he was still up to his old tricks in 2015 so I found an earlier report about him and this is what he used to do because obviously in 2015, betting shops, um, they didn't operate their bet slips how they used to. But he was called the pencil man because he used to get hold of betting slips, write down, say, I don't know what you could say, um, red rum, £10 win. And then what used to happen in the bookmakers, they would have a carbon copy at the bottom, which was your copy, and the top copy was theirs. So you'd hand it over and they'd usually leave it by the counter. But what he used to do is let the race run, whether it be a dog race that was quick or a horse race, and then he would retrieve the top of the slip from the bookmakers, and then he would write back in the winner on there over the carbon copy. So he had both copies, and then later on he would cash his money in. It might seem a bit bizarre to you now, but it explains it all in here, and I'll leave the link down below. And it says here that he was a very charismatic um charismatic guy and that's how he could get away with this but he could also have the ability to be dangerous and that's why when i worked in the office he was ringing up making threats and apparently i got told by a member of staff that he even come into the office once but he didn't have a swipe card this was back in the late 90s and this um report here of uh the pencil man getting what does it say here that he went to court he got some form of custodial sense back in 2003 and that's why i was surprised to see he was still at it in 2015 but this case here this one in 2015 was where he was basically multi-accounting but what he was saying to the guys who he was multi-accounting for was if you get me some more money i can get the funds that are trapped in your account so he didn't get prosecuted for multi-accounting. He got prosecuted for swindling people out of even more money. And as you can see here, it was a 2.1 million of betting fraud. So apparently this um, pencil man, he knew how to butter staff up behind the counter. And he would get on their side. Apparently he's a larger than life character. Um, and I'm surprised he was still at it in 2015. But he was obviously addicted to the game. And this is one of the kind of things that you used to get in betting shops. More so, you used to get a thing called slow count. And what slow count was, was you um, you would write the betting slip out, give it to the counter, the person behind the counter, and then you wouldn't pay. So say you'd done it on a greyhound, and you would wait and see if the greyhound got out the traps first, and then you'd had the money over after, or if it was a horse race, you'd wait and see, say it was a five furlong flat race, you'd wait and see if the horse was doing well, and then if it didn't, you'd say, oh, I haven't got my cash on me, or I've lost my wallet, or I've just got to go to the cash point. And these people were getting away with it, but eventually they would end up on the hall of shame, behind the counter, the rogues gallery, where I don't know whether they're legally allowed to do it now, but there used to be pictures of people and no doubt this pencil man, he might have been on there. But um, his real name was John Bailey, by the way. But if your picture is behind there, then you're banned. You know, I've known of people that have even got into relationships with, uh, with coral staff just to be able to take advantage of things. I know people have done that in the past. And another um, dodgy thing that used to go on in betting shops as you can probably uh, tell, I've spent a lot of time in betting shops. I used to bunk off school when I was 15 years old to go in a betting shop. 
and back then there was no ventilation or nothing like that when you went in there you could also smoke in there then so you can imagine no ventilation you was allowed to smoke in there you'd come out smelling like a ashtray and i didn't smoke at the time so i'm surprised i didn't get busted but that's where i accrued my uh first initial uh i wouldn't call them skills but a wasted adolescence and early life and um it was only lately i've stopped frequenting um betting shops really but another one that people used to do this is not me what by the way and like i say i'm not condoning any of this this is a report back about sharbin because i've got a sharbin section on the new website the links down below was what people used to do is they used to write a scruffy three down and when say five one say this is a dog race you've got six runners you'd write three down in a really pathetic way which could have two meanings if you sloppily write down a three now that could easily be a five with a towel at the top so what would people would do is say argue say that's not three that's five i had 50 pound on trap five and then it would be a matter of will and i know that because i used to work with some guys who were expecting shop managers and then working in the role beside me they said that they used to get that all the time people saying a three's a five and a five's a three and then they would just like battle it out but this is the kind of unscrupulous behavior that you did used to get in betting shops a lot um i doubt the pencil man can't ply his trade on it now one because they've not got carbon copies in there two because it's all electric but it used to be doable um also well back in the day of betting shops there used to be no pictures i don't remember this i'm not that old but i got told all this stuff that you used to be able to go in there and if you worked in a betting shop there was a lot of opportunities to do naughty things because a lot of the race results were delayed heavily and it was coming across on the um on the radio and there was a lot of uh, corruption going on then but this is to go on my um Charmin section of the website if you haven't checked it out hit the link below and um good luck with your sharpening big thank you for watching guys if you're not following me on twitter i'm at arbor hunter also on instagram arb hunter 101 and the link to my website if it's not down below there will be an updates link in there on my website there'll be four match betting calculators a blog a member site profit tips and it'll be a different vibe to the standard match betting site i hope to see you on there later in the year good luck guys